The valleys hold some hundreds of small, snug farms, and its mountains really are mountains. Its peaks are seldom seen. They usually lie under vast cloud caps. Across the peninsula lies the parish of Enniscall. Its curate is Father Jerome Dennehy. The village of Ellerskall holds the parish church. This morning, Father Dennehy's day begins with an early sick call, and this requires a visit to the tabernacle for the Holy Viaticum. There is a clean milk scheme in progress at the local creamery. A meeting has to be arranged. Seamus Murphy, the agricultural advisor, depends on Father Dennehy's help. They will meet later. Father Dennehy is first and always the people's priest. His day usually begins with mass in one of the three parish churches. But this morning he will say a station mass in a valley farmhouse. So he must make his sick call first. Care of the sick is a virtue for all Christian people. The helplessness of the sick endears them to us. In the priest, it is mandatory. Pope John tells us in Matter at Magistra that the church's first care must be for souls. Here in Honest Gaul, I must put first things first. I must offer mass and administer the sacraments. I must preach the word of God. And I must care in a special way for the sick and for the young. The station mass is one of the oldest and dearest traditions of rural Ireland, a survival of the penal days. Twice a year, mass is said in each station district of the parish for the householder and his nearer neighbours. Usually, the sacrifice is celebrated in the kitchen or living room of the farmhouse. The privilege rotates from farm to farm within the townlands of the district. There are 20 such districts in the parish of Enniscall. For weeks before the station mass, the house and its approaches are carefully prepared to welcome the Divine Presence. Confessions are heard in the farmhouse parlour. In penal days, this was the only way, normally, in which the people's confessions could be heard. The beautiful simplicity of these station masses is heightened by the new liturgical reforms in which the people group themselves round the table of their Lord and respond almost conversationally to the words of the celebrant. Few things in country life excite such pride as having one's house selected for the celebration of the Mass. And the traditional station breakfast is not only an important part of the whole ceremony, but is a social occasion for the ladies of the neighbourhood. 
It is a strangely authentic echo of the early Christian feasts of charity. The parish has five national schools and a fine staff of teachers. The casual visitor, visitor is struck forcibly, not merely by the parochial insistence on education, but by the widespread enthusiasm for education among the people. This is a Brach Eltok. Its people are bilingual for the most part. In Enniskall, there is a long tradition of entry into the public services, where familiarity with two languages is a great advantage. This helps to promote educational interest among parents and the people. The high standard of trained intelligence among the people of this remote parish has helped Father Dennehy and his colleagues immeasurably in their attempts to improve social conditions generally and farming techniques particularly. Pope John's encyclical, Martyret Magistra, is the source from which Father Dennehy draws his inspiration. Pope John also tells us in Martyret Magistra that the Church concerns herself with the problems of men's daily life, with his livelihood and education, and his general welfare and prosperity. These words have particular application in rural Ireland, where there are very many of the problems that Pope John had in mind. So many problems, in fact, that one would think at times that the whole structure of rural life was threatened. I do what I can to try and help to solve these problems. And Skoll is a dairying district. Mr. Seamus Murphy is the local agricultural advisor whose work knits closely into Father Dennehy's improvement schemes. At this time, we are conducting an intensive campaign for the production of quality milk. I try to get across the basic principles involved by advice, by arranging demonstrations, and by making available reliable sources of information. Of course, I get invaluable help from Father Dennehy, who is keenly interested in everything the farmers do. The Creamery Improvement Project has two main objectives and many ancillary ones. First, by intensive education and encouragement to increase the butterfat content of the milk. This involves a long-term plan for the improvement of cattle stocks in the parish, together with the provision of new cow buyers and milking parlours. At the same time, an intensive fertilising project is underway to increase the grass yield and improve cattle feeding generally. The second objective is to raise the standard of handling of milk to the highest point with particular emphasis on cleanliness and temperature controls on the farms themselves. An incentive bonus is paid for milk with a minimum bacteria content. The most modern techniques and experiments are made available to the people through this scheme. One of the ancillary objects is to increase the farmer's income. The farmers take away the skimmed milk for feeding pigs and calves, and the creamery cooperates with a low price purchase scheme. The rural population must, if possible, have other means of income at their disposal, means which they can exploit in the social circumstances in which they find themselves. Relying first, then, on our own assets, the beauty of our parish, its proximity to the sea and the energies of our people. It was decided here in Onesgall that this extra income must come in the first place from tourism. We had already begun the work of improving our basic industry, agriculture. Some of our people realized the advantages of tourism. 
extra rooms were added, whole guest houses were built, flats were fitted with bathrooms and toilets. Bedrooms were nicely furnished. Caravans were sighted and outside facilities including gardens were provided. Farmers also became interested in tourism and prepared their houses to meet the needs of the moment. After only four years' work, a new industry was created in the parish. It may seem odd to the casual visitor that tourism on this beautiful peninsula is a completely new enterprise. Father Dennehy organized not only a tourist drive, but a tourist facilities improvement scheme. This created a building industry of considerable proportions. There are, in all, about 40 parishioners' houses already involved in the new tourist enterprises. An energetic group of women have formed a development committee which conducts an advertising campaign and they promote domestic improvements to meet the requirements of a trade that has become more and more exacting in its demands. Father Dennehy likes to initiate projects, keep in touch with them as far as possible, but once the organization itself is able to sustain itself, he likes to leave them to themselves. Mr. James Begley is the public assistance officer in the parish. Well, now the situation of the people of this parish has been improving very much. The number of applications for uh, public assistance has been dropping recently. This is largely due to uh, the improvement of land for smallholders who would otherwise depend on a little assistance. And uh, the area pilot scheme can get credit for this, some of this development. And for that reason, we haven't as much public assistance. Uh, the people are inclined to use the medical services more, more intelligently than they used in the past. The crime rate in the parish is negligible. There is no juvenile delinquency problem, whatever. The civic guards attribute this fact very largely to the relatively high educational standards among the youth of the parish. Notwithstanding an influx of tourists, it remains true that no serious breach of public order has occurred for many years. Although there are no secondary schools in the parish, a very high proportion of its children attend at Dingle and Tralee. Perhaps the most extraordinary, certainly the most remarkable educational effort undertaken in the past four years has been the Young Farmers Day School. This was held in Dingle during last winter. The demand for places was very high and kept the school going almost all the week. Pope John attaches considerable importance to education in matter at Magista. The vast majority of our boys and girls here in Honest God have post-primary education. This is very important. Resulting from it, new and more enlightened attitudes are developing. In particular, the attitude towards immigration has completely changed. Now the vast majority of those who have post-primary education seek and find work at home in Ireland. Vocational training in agriculture is a basic, primary, fundamental need. It is absolutely vital. 
In this area, the Dairy Disposal Company and the County Committee of Agriculture have combined to provide a day school for young farmers. About 40 young men attended this school last winter and next winter we'll do the second part of a planned course. The school was not confined in its activities to purely theoretical.